The Alliance of Civilizations concept has to be brought down to the level of civil society because that is where you influence perceptions of ordinary people. And it is these mutually hostile perceptions that have led to these tensions. The challenge is to find effective ways of doing this. My main experience was uh, in political work, in peacekeeping, and then as Chief of Staff to the Secretary General. We have what are called civilizations, they're really traditions, cultures, who have coexisted with each other. But now there is this hostile uh, perception of each other. If we want to determine what has led to those hostile perceptions, we have to look for the roots. There is a perception in the Islamic world that they are being subjected to aggression. Extremist groups in the Islamic world have reacted very violently, saying that they will not accept this sort of aggression, which is conducted under rules that were established by the Western world, and that these are rules that these extremist groups do not recognize. The tensions do not arise simply from religious differences. Religion does play a part, but religion has shaped perceptions, shaped traditions, shaped ways of thinking. Essentially, non-religious issues become religious issues simply because of these hostile perceptions that have developed. Even Iraq was an issue of weapons of mass destruction, violation of human rights. These are non-religious issues, but now when we look at Iraq, it has, the whole situation has acquired a religious dimension. Both the Muslim world versus the West, as well as Islamic beliefs on one side versus Islamic beliefs on the other within the Muslim community itself. The Alliance of Civilizations is trying to confront the situation and to find effective means and measures to try and defuse these tensions. One of the major um, elements that would have to be addressed in the high-level group support is the media, the role of the media, in how the media can be brought around to contributing to the defusion of these tensions, because there is no doubt that the media has contributed to the mounting of these tensions. The right to freedom of speech or freedom of expression is a fundamental right which I think is accepted everywhere, but it is not absolute. It has to be exercised with some responsibility. The media has contributed because, very rightly, it projects images. It does have to report what is happening in the world, and those images simply strengthen these misperceptions and these hostile mutually hostile images. This is not a political, simply a political question that governments could resolve if they sat down around a table. This involves beliefs, emotions, traditions, cultures, and all this exists in the minds of ordinary people. So we really have to find a way that will influence the hearts and minds of ordinary people across this divide.